welcome back. This is going to be a different kind of video today. Um, I've thought about doing something like this for a while. It was just a matter of uh, how to do it. So you can see in my hands, we are not in the same setup. Uh, it's a close-up of my sort of weird backdrop here that I have here. Uh, and in my hands, I have some string, uh, quite a lot of string. Uh, exactly 2.8 meters of string uh, folded in half. So today we're going to be making slings. Take about half an hour to make, maybe I'll cut some bits out. I mean, it does get very repetitive, but, uh, and I'm not just going to sit here in silence making a sling, I'm going to chat about some things. Um, perhaps if I was, you know, some kind of these other YouTubers, I would have a uh, live stream and people ask questions, but of course, I'm not like that. So I'm just going to look around and uh, see what I can spot. I have quite a lot of stuff on my painting table at the moment, because I'm uh, uh, a bit of a butterfly. But let's start with the string and we'll go from there. So, to make slings, uh, these are slings made from historical materials in a historical way. Uh, these are fine for your Greeks, your Romans, um, Dark Age slings, all the way up to uh, Spanish Civil War. Uh, yeah, these things are used forever. Uh, slings make a comeback with the advent of uh, Molotov cocktails, grenades, that sort of thing. Although, I'm not sure how you would sling a grenade, but people, you, know, you can sling um, homemade grenades rather than, than um, Mills bombs or, or anything like that. So, to make a sling, you need some of this, right? This is what I use. It's called jute. Uh, jute is a very historical plant. Um, I'll put an image of what a jute plant looks like here. Uh, these are very common in Northern Europe. Uh, you can get sisal. Sisal is a cactus. Um, it's not historically accurate, but it's just as good for making a practical sling. Uh, this was like $2, and it's from Bunnings or uh, Home Depot type place. Uh, then you will need your string and uh, a tool to work the string with. Um, you might use something like this, a pair of uh, hobby clippers. These work just fine. They can snip string. Uh, you might get a kitchen knife. I prefer to... Uh, a little bit more uh, exciting and I use a Bowie knife. Yeah, uh, So this is a Bowie knife which I've uh, had for many many years now. It's probably not in the best condition but I use it a lot. Um, you can hear it's a little it's a little loose but I'll fix that up. Um, the reason I use this is that number one it's what people at the time would have used. Probably not obviously this was invented in the in the 1830s or 1820s but um, Somebody in the, in the ancient or medieval period would have had some kind of knife, probably a lot shorter, but um, definitely not clippers or something like that. And if you're ever in a survival situation, and in your survival pack you should absolutely have string and a knife, uh, especially something like this. Bowie knives are, uh, you know, I'll talk about bowie knives during the thing rather than now, but anyway. A bowie knife, which I'll put back in the sheath, because safety. And, so we have our string, we have our bowie knife, and I like to cut a whole bunch of little pieces of string. I'm not sure I've got this camera's focusing right now because I'm looking at it upside down. But see here, just some little bits of string and these are used for just tying off. Now, to make the sling, we get six pieces of 280 centimeter long string. Uh, this is also, I have it written down here, it is also, I believe, 110 inches for those of you who still use those. Yes, 110 inches or 210 centi uh, 280 centimeters. Uh, fold it in half and you can see here I've tied it off at the halfway point. Uh, I didn't want to film that because generally that's just everyone knows how to measure and cut string. Okay, it's a, it's a very simple procedure. Now we're going to be making a just a the generic sling uh, as can be found at slinging.org. Uh, I'll include a link to that below and this is how I make all my slings. I've made many many of these but uh, I don't believe I've made one in the last three months so uh, forgive me if I'm a little rusty although of course if I make a mistake you'll never find out because I get to edit all these things uh, no matter how poorly I do it. So to start off with um, I don't sure know if you can see this but uh, safety first of course safety first must wear shoes uh, in Australia, these do count as shoes, and so we will lay the string on the ground and simply step on it, okay? And you just move it around until you get it to where you need to be. Uh, later on, we'll be doing uh, much more uh, 
much more thorough job, hence why the camera is the way it is. Now, from here, we are going to braid the finger loop. Here's a picture of the sling, uh, the finger loop. Now, the finger loop will go around one of the fingers. Now, depending on the type of slinging you use, it depends on the finger. I normally prefer the ring finger or the middle finger. Um, so, we're going to braid a 10 centimeter or 4 inch uh, finger, finger thing. And to do that, we just simply divide the string. First, we're going to braid the finger loop. And to do that, uh, braiding slings is exactly the same as braiding hair. Uh, I'm going to say braiding, plaiting, braiding, it's all the same thing. If you know how to braid or plait hair, you know how to braid or plait slings. Uh, I have been bald uh, almost my entire life. Bald or with a crew cut. Um, and I've only recently got long hair in the last sort of two or three years. So I have no idea how to braid hair, but I can braid slings. So. Uh, I'm not going to go through it. If you know how to do it, you know how to do it. If you don't, then uh, it's quite easy to find out and it's actually very, very easy to learn. Um, not for me. I'm just having some trouble with this. So I'm going to cut real quickly and tie this off properly. So we're going to braid the finger loop first. Uh, I do apologize if I'm not in frame. Um, again, this is a sort of test thing. So it's outside in. Your standard braid technique, uh, your standard plaiting technique, depending on um, where you are and what you say. And this will go on for 4 inches or 10 centimeters, depending on, on who you ask. Uh, now, while I do this, I know it's fascinating to look at the back of my hand as I braid something, but uh, I'm going to talk about slings. Uh, so there's a couple of different types of slings. Uh, what I'm making here is sort of a hand sling. Um, this is something that you're you just infantrymen could carry around with him. Uh, Romans used slings, um, although Romans didn't use slings in the same way they used the gladius. They didn't just take a sling into every battle with them. Uh, the Romans would issue slings from a quartermaster or from a camp. They wouldn't just uh, just carry them around. Uh, other soldiers would, and if you were, of course, a mercenary or something, you could be a mercenary slinger. Um, being a mercenary slinger is actually probably one of the easiest uh, things to to do as in to, uh, to prepare for, in that you, you really don't need a lot of skill to use a sling in a, uh, in a skirmishing role. If you know how to throw a ball, uh, you know how to use a sling, pretty much. So, I imagine quite a few young lads who are trying to get their, uh, make their way in the mercenary world of the ancient world would have, uh, would have gone into the slinging trade. Um, you can use a shield with a sling, it's quite easy. Uh, I don't actually have a shield. Although I should make a shield because I do have the materials there. Now, yeah. let's just see how we're going. Again, this is the first time I've made one in quite a while, so it will, it will not be the most beautiful thing in the world. Uh, tape measure, of course, quite important. I'm going to be making a metric sling because this is Australia. And we do things in metric down here. Oh, except our wargaming. Our wargaming is all done in inches because that is the proper and correct way to do wargaming. Speaking of wargaming, uh, slings don't really get a lot of attention in um, ancient wargaming. Uh, well, they, they do get attention, but most people are, are more concerned with things like uh, like javelins and and bows. Bows are you know always very popular in wargaming, but slings are actually marvelous weapons. Uh, Bows actually take quite a lot of, uh, there's a myth that bows take a lot of training to use, that's not true. Uh, bows take a lot of upper body strength to use, and uh, which is a form of training, I suppose. But uh, yeah, bows, are to, to make war bows, uh, useful, you need quite a lot of upper body strength. And a javelin has quite a short range, whereas a, a sling can hit quite hard, it has quite a long range, uh, especially if you use staff slings. I, was I doing that all down, oh, okay. Maybe I'll move this camera down a little bit more. So that is about as long as I want it to be for the finger loop. Uh, it's actually a little bit over, but that does not matter. Of course, if it's a little bit over, we simply pinch it, and we can unravel the, uh, the last little bit that we did, that I did. We, I, I don't know who's making this. <laughs> and here's where we take the little piece of string we had earlier, and we just tie it off. Uh, you don't have to do this, I like to do it because it's sort of like, um, I've got compulsive reload disorder and compulsive save disorder, so I'm constantly hitting control S and you know, I'm the guy in the FPS shooter, you fire one bullet from your gun and you got to reload the whole damn thing. So I like to save my progress with these little loops. 
it just stops it if something really goes wrong or if you have to leave the sling for a while the entire thing doesn't just come apart uh, where it is so that's how we are so far it's not the most pretty job in the world but it'll work um, this sling will work uh, hopefully quite well so this will be the finger loop and as you can see we will we'll now join these two sections together and the finger will fit quite nicely in that area as you can see there uh, there are a few different schools of slinging when it comes to which finger goes uh, oh sorry which uh, on which finger the ring goes um, I'm not a proponent of any particular school of slinging I've, uh, I've never bothered to, to learn anything like that I don't consider it a, uh, a there's no military manuals as far as I'm uh, aware on ancient slinging techniques or even even medieval slinging techniques so I'm going to do a quick cut while I detangle myself because I've made a horrific mess behind me here off camera so uh, I will be back in one second okay so I've tied off the sling it looks very messy and ugly now but uh, we'll get there so I've divided the I've tied oh sorry I've combined the finger loop it looks quite large that doesn't really matter uh, large is better than small as far as I'm concerned although there obviously there is limits uh, we're all students of Plato here um, <laughs> I believe it was Plato that, that said everything in excess, or sorry, um, everything in moderation. Um, excess and deprivation are both bad. Anyway, uh, that's our ancient philosophy lesson for today. So I've taken the, the uh, we were working with six, now we are working with 12. So before we had divisions of two, now we have divisions of four. And I've taken two from each, uh, front, front, middle, middle, back, back. And now I will braid these into a, scroll, 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 scroll a 14 inch uh, long strand or a, a 36 centimeters so as you can see that was a 10 centimeter or a 4 inch it's it's really not that uh, that does not take long to make slings at all and um, if you're into historical reenactment uh, I'm not myself uh, I have made some slings for some guys and I just sort of gave it to them who were into into dark age Viking reenactment um, they seem to have a lot of fun with them uh, they're great little toys to play around with I sling stuff all the time uh, don't sling rocks onto a, onto grass. I don't think people need to be told this, but don't just sling rocks onto grass because mowers will hit them and, and smash things. Um, uh, don't sling towards freaking houses or something. You know, I don't. I don't think I have to tell anybody this because yeah, people are smart. But uh, I don't want someone you know, sending me a nasty email because they one of their kids went out and made a sling and smashed something. But uh, anyway. Um, Okay, so what did, how did the Romans and or anyone else make uh, ammunition for their slings? Well, you could go to a riverbed, and if you were extremely lucky, and you had done all the uh, the disemboweling of goats and the, the wringing of necks of chickens and all the other nonsense that they got up to back then, uh, you might find a perfectly round stone. And uh, the, with this perfectly round stone could then be, you could just pop that right in your ammunition bag, and you could walk away with it. Uh, and you know, find some more perfectly round stones because you killed many, many chickens for Zeus or for Mars or whatever. But uh, most of the time, because you had not uh, sacrificed, you know, a bunch of chickens and stuff, you would find these sort of oblong shaped rocks or you would find a couple of weird rocks and you take them back to the camp and you would take out a sort of a. and you take out a little hammer or something and you'd spend your day. Uh, chipping away at these rocks to make them into sort of the shape that you want. So quite a lot of uh, ammunition was made that way by uh, by finding stones that were sort of close enough and then you know giving them the final touch. Uh, you could also use bullets. Uh, that's right, bullets. Uh, bullets are from the ancient world. Remember, of course, that when we talk about ammunition, we're talking about a, a cartridge, which has a casing and a primer, a bullet. So the bullet itself is only the the tip of the see. It's only the tip of the of the cartridge type thing when we talk about that. So the Romans had bullets. Um, their slingers had them anyway. And quite a lot of these would actually be in the shape of a thumb. So they'd stick a thumb in the sand and you'd uh, pour your, your liquid lead. Because workplace health and safety was, I believe, more than two millennia away by the time of the ancient Roman campaigns. And uh, you would pour your liquid lead into this sort of hole and uh, wait for it to, to set, and you would have some ammunition. Uh, we've found uh, there's well, not we, but uh, 
proper historians who do this sort of thing professionally have uh, have found uh, have found bullets with with both carvings and uh, written messages on them, things like catch or duck or gotcha, that sort of stuff. So uh, slingers seem to have a, a good sense of humour, which is quite good if you're going to do their sort of job, which is generally to be a troll, a sort of ancient troll. Your job was to screen the army as it advanced, to mask the army as it repositioned. Uh, your job was to engage the enemy slingers and to basically run away whenever anyone tried to engage in close combat with you. So you would be your classic troll, you know, internet type deal, where you would uh, sling insults and sling, uh, well literally if you're, if you're slinging uh, ammunition with, with slogans on it, but you would quite literally sling things at the enemy and then when the enemy tried to react you would run away like a little uh, baby. But of course that was what you were getting paid for. Now, uh, every now and then, just give it a check. Uh, I mean, that's quite a respectable size, don't you think? I mean, that's got to be at least six inches. But uh, and no matter what anybody tells you, six inches is a perfectly respectable size. That's about eight, so we're up on the. Anyway, I won't go into that. So we're at eight. We need to be at fourteen. I know I said I was going to do centimeters, but I, it's a bit of, you can convert that, or I'll convert that and put it on the screen for you now. And there you go. That's how many centimeters it is. There you go. Future Dylan. That's going to be some fun work for you. Anyway. Um, so the role of slingers on the battlefield. Uh, bows. Bows are really good. But bows are sort of hard to get people to learn how to use. Bows have... Um, bows are quite affected by weather. Bows are also affected by the way you store and transport them. Uh, for example, if your quartermaster or somebody leaves the bows uh, in storage when they are strung and you get on a ship or you march somewhere and those bows are going to be useless by the time you get somewhere uh, it's, if you know a couple of months in storage with a strong bow uh, can really ruin it especially if in a damp climate um, bow strings themselves can become wet if not properly sealed um, and a wet bow string loses tension which uh, means it's imparting less force on the target oh sorry on the uh, on the object and by uh, extension the the target um, Slings, on the other hand, don't rely on elastic uh, strength. So, a bowstring relies on um, tightening and stretching the fibers of the bowstring, and then uh, and and bending the wood and bending everything and and making sure everything sort of supply bends and then snaps back into position very quickly. Whereas a sling is using the principle of inertia and uh, uh, Newtonian physics, as opposed to oh, it's oh, I suppose bows also use Newtonian physics, but a string is, a sling is a quite a good example of Newtonian physics. In that inertia, of course, for those of you who've done your Newtonian, uh, your Newton is that uh, objects in motion like to stay in motion and objects at rest like to stay at rest. And so when we take this, this rock and we swing it really fast and we swing it that way and we suddenly stop exerting a centri centripetal force, centripetal force is inward force, centrifugal force is outward force. So when we stop exerting centripetal force on the object, it will continue moving in the same direction it was moving. Now, this can be a problem, and uh, this is why you should mostly sling uh, the way a cricket uh, cricketer would bowl, uh, overarm. Uh, there's definitely uh, a place for sideways slinging, slinging uh, backhand or forehand sideways in this direction. The only problem is, if you let go early or late in this direction, you swing early or late in this direction. So if you're, uh, if you're I don't know, slinging into a creek and beside you is someone's house and you screw up and you go a bit late you've got to replace a window or run very fast although you should always replace things that you damage because uh, somebody has to and it might as well be you uh, but anyway and uh, with with uh, slinging overarm if you do let go early or late uh, you can you will most likely not hit anything because you're either going to go into the ground or way up in the air. Um, <laughs> maybe you want to wear a helmet if you want to be ridiculously safe, but uh, I tend to not. I've never once had a single serious deviation at all uh, when slinging overarm. Uh, there's also diagonally. Uh, diagonally is probably what most people would be most comfortable with. Being from Australia, I have uh, grew up playing cricket. I was never an athlete of any kind, I never played it professionally, but you'd always go down the park and play cricket. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Google it, because I'm not going to explain cricket to you, but cricket 
uh, involves overarm bowling and um, this is actually something that comes up in the Second World War um, when grenades just really start being issued uh, towards the end of the First World War as well but mostly in the Second World War when grenades are being widely issued and I'm going to talk about it more in Operation Anthropod the assassination of um, I believe Heydrich in, uh, in Czechoslovakia but essentially they found that anybody who is not um, Australian, if you, if you were not a Commonwealth nation or from the United States, there was there was a big learning curve with using grenades, uh, especially the style of grenades that the Allies used, as opposed to German stick grenades. So here's a German stick grenade. Here's an Allied pineapple grenade or a, a Mills bomb type deal. Um, so they found that the cult, the cultures with a a strong ball sports, um, a strong I'm trying to do this one-handed, sorry. A strong emphasis on ball sports like American baseball or, or Commonwealth cricket um, sort of had a, a much more natural uh, ability to use grenades because it was much more of a natural thing. Uh, when they actually picked out the two Czechoslovakian assassins to, uh, to kill uh, Heydrich, the only, uh, the only actual official assassination attempt uh, of a German official in the Second World War, as far as I'm concerned or as far as I know, uh, they actually had to really train the Czechoslovakians quite hard to uh, to get them to the point where they were able to actually use the grenades, which would be crucial in the in the assassination. But uh, you can watch that video when I research it and when it comes out, because I have to reread Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare for probably the seventh time. Uh, it's a fantastic book. It's it's easy to reread over and over again because it's so it's so broad. It covers everything, but um, it's very easy to read. It's very well written. Um, but I'm going to have to reread that chapter again just to know exactly what I'm talking about. So there is our 14 inches of uh, sling. This is how sort of long one of the arms of the sling is going to be. Now, here's where we start to get a bit tricky because now we have to anchor the, the point to something so we can really get it tight. And that's why the camera is where it is. So I'm just going to anchor it to that there. I can pull on that all day long. That's screwed to the bookshelf above it, which is screwed to the wall. If that comes down, um, the last thing I'm going to be worried about is... Uh, is how the recording turns out, so you won't see it. So if you see this, it means the bookshelf did not come down and crush me. I'm not in intensive care, at least not for that. And uh, this sling came out all right, so uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Now, we're going to make the the cup of the sling. This is the one thing where you can really play around with it. I like to keep it, um, if anything, a little bit smaller than is uh, described here on slinging.org. Uh, I love the internet. It's so fantastic, isn't it? The slinging.org. You know, you don't forget a library and, and find a book on and slinging and, and wait for it to be delivered. You can actually just go online. Uh, four inches is the thing that they say. I tend to like three and a half. Um, purely because just a little bit tighter. Um, it's just a little bit nicer to, to sling with. Now, see how they're sort of, these, are in, these four are in a group. There'll be three of these groups of four and they're all very easily identifiable. So what we're going to do is intermingle them. So two from this group two from this group Oop, come on get it out of there and two from this group over here and this sort of it just creates a, a tighter um, more substantial uh, bond because we're mixing the two strands together into one and so if it does want to unravel it's going to have to unravel uh, several almost pretty much knots uh, over and over again so we'll start with this one Make sure we take the securing knot out of there so it doesn't corrupt the chain or the braid, sorry. Now, if you are, I believe I have it up there, but it is it is hidden under something. It's, it's I believe it's under stuff, so I won't get it out now. But uh, this is the, the type of sling that uh, David would have used, uh, a biblical type sling. Sometimes you see these sort of slings called biblical slings. Um, yeah, there were biblical era slings. There were there were biblical slings. There were also Viking slings. So these these sort of slings don't have a particular time period. But uh, yes, indeed, if you are if you're into your biblical warfare or just the Bible in general, or sort of uh, getting a bit of a glimpse of at what sort of weapons would have been used, then this is indeed the uh, the type of sling that would have been used by David, of course, in his fight against Goliath. So we are we are going to. It, it looks incredibly difficult. It's not. I, I really don't want this to come across as something impressive. This is literally just... Uh, it is currently uh, 10 after 11 on a 
Friday night, which is sort of depressing. But um, but this is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, and I finally have the time to do it. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Anyway, uh, speaking of of time, um, this morning at 10 a.m. Oh, it's probably still on Twitch. What do you mean? On uh, on Twitch this morning, uh, Jim Oriskany from Beast of War and I sat down and we did some Photoshop designing for uh, what well, we. Jim did a lot of Photoshop designing for Valorant Victory while I sort of butted in with a weird point now and then. Um, big thanks to Jim for that. So go over to, uh, to Sitrep Podcast at twitch.com and check them out. They're awesome. Uh, fantastic. If you want to learn about modern warfare, they're, they're brilliant guys to go to. Um, Jim normally streams every Monday on Twitch, so if you're into watching uh, Hex Encounter games on, uh, on live stream, it's exactly for you. Uh, I love Hex Encounter Wargaming now. It's something I've never done until uh, until Jim lured me into it, but it's it's really really fun. Um, I, was, I shouldn't say that. Uh, well, it is of course very fun, but uh, I have actually done a single instance of Hex Encounter Wargaming. I'm all messed up. Um, I have played uh, Kayla Fair or Quella Fair, um, done by uh, Alessio Cavatore from uh, Riverhorse Publishing. I, it's the uh, the Waterloo game that he did, and that's very very good. Uh, I do not know where my copy is, but uh, I'd love to get that out and play it again, because that's a really, really fun game. That's actually where the, and some of the background shots I've have, uh, Napoleon and Blucher and, uh, Napoleon, Blucher and Sir Arthur Wellesley, Duke of Wellington busts that I had uh, painted for me. They came with the, the uh, River Horse Kayla Fair Kickstarter. So, whoop, I've gone too long. And see, this is the beauty of, of making slings. We can just pinch it off. Where we want to be. That's a I shouldn't use that word, but anyway. <laughs> it's quite literally what I'm doing, but you know, maybe a tad vulgar, but um, we can just go back to where we were, unravel the sling, get one of our trusty little off-cut pieces. Um, I normally get about ten of these, I just keep cutting until I sort of feel like it's enough, but um But yeah, when I'm finished I'll, I'll tell you how many I used and I'll put that number on the screen now. I do hope you can actually, I really should keep more of a friggin' eye on that. Um, <laughs> to apologize, I apologize if I'm going out of frame. If I ever go out of frame, I'll just put pictures up, so you won't notice. Except I've just told you. Now, of course, uh, we're going to do the exact same thing again with the secondary piece of uh, thing. And that'll form our cup. Uh, you notice the cup is it's exactly the same as making the, the finger loop. Yeah, so that should be about the same size as our finger loop. Of course, it's a little bit smaller because I've deliberately made it smaller. But here you can see that a three and a half inch finger loop still does indeed fit, although it is very snug.